In this video, we're going to give you an overview of how ICSI works. First, we have the probe, which has an ultrasound mounted on the inside of it and a needle guide mounted on the top of it, which allows us to visualize the follicles and aim the needle to aspirate the eggs from the inside of the follicles. There's a double lumen needle, which you can see being organized here, which goes into a sterile sleeve, which then is inserted into the probe, which allows us then to have the needle protrude above the ultrasound and where we actually place the follicle for penetration for aspiration. Once the probe is assembled, it is coated with sterile lube and then covered with a sterile sheath so no infection is introduced into the mare. The mare is placed in the chute, tail wrapped, washed, and then the probe is inserted in the mare's vagina. As you can see from this diagram, the vagina of the mare leads to the cervix where the probe is placed, and then the other hand is placed rectally and pulls the ovary back to place it on the forward facing ultrasound on the end of the probe. The needle then must penetrate the anterior vagina and into the ovary. The tubings that are placed on the inner and outer needle, one goes to a fluid reservoir for pumping fluid in, the other goes to the aspiration reservoir for pumping fluid out. This is a diagram of a mare's ovary and you can see this has depicted several small follicles, but on ultrasound, on this particular mare's ovary, there are many large black circles, each of which is a follicle, and each follicle has an oocyte or egg in it. If you look closely, you can see a white line above the left side of the screen where the needle is advanced into the follicle. On the ultrasound, the needle appears as a white line. We line the black follicles up and put the white line in the follicle. The follicle collapses from the aspiration and then is re- When all the follicles on one ovary have been aspirated, the follicle is released and the hand that is in the rectum retrieves the second ovary and places it on the probe to aspirate the follicles on the second ovary. This is the aspirator. There is an aspiration tube coming from the aspiration which creates suction in the aspiration vial. The vial is placed in a warm warming box and the inlet tubing from the needle also goes through the two hole stopper and the fluid is a, aspiration fluid is accumulated in the flask which then contains all the oocytes that are aspirated. During the aspiration, the technician must spin the needle to scrape the follicles, the eggs, off the sides of the follicles.
Once all the follicles have been aspirated on both ovaries, the aspiration flask is removed, taken to a search station, and filtered through an embryo filter cup. These are the same cups that we use to filter embryos, the difference being that the aspiration media from oocytes contains blood and cellular debris which you do not see in an embryo flush. Therefore, these have to be thoroughly rinsed over and over again till all the blood is rinsed out, which allows us to search for the oocytes. The other difference is we'll probably accumulate several oocytes where normally the search is over once we have found one embryo. The debris in the, uh, in the oocyte flushes is a problem because oocytes tend to stick to everything. They are very small, very difficult to find, and there are many of them. They also tend to stick to the screen in the bottom of the cup, so the cup must be thoroughly rinsed. We search in a gridded search dish, the same one we use to search for embryos, and it is on a heated stage. Everything must be temperature controlled with oocytes, more critical than with embryo searches because these are much more temperature sensitive than embryos are. Sometimes the, embryo, the oocyte search takes longer than the aspiration if there are many follicles and many oocytes. This is a picture of an immature oocyte in the search dish beside a blood clot. You can see the other cells and debris that we must search through to find the oocytes. They are thoroughly rinsed in rinse drops and then accumulated in a reservoir dish where all the oocytes from this particular aspiration will be accumulated before they're placed in maturation media. We aspirated 25 follicles on both ovaries on this mare and ended up with 20 immature oocytes that we will place in maturation media. Once these are matured, we can expect about one out of every 10 or depending on the fertility of the mare, one out of every seven of these to become an actual embryo. These are matured oocytes ready to be injected once the cells have been stripped off of them. And this is the injection pipette on the microscope aspirating one sperm from a very small sample of semen, which is one of the miracles of ICSI. It allows us to inject hundreds of mares with a very small sample of a frozen straw of semen, therefore prolonging the genetics of valuable stallions when semen is very scarce. You can see in the injection pipette, the sperm is run down the pipette to the tip, placed into the oocyte. Aspiration is necessary to make sure you've penetrated the membrane, and then the sperm is injected. This is another aspira uh, aspiration on the injection of a second egg, and injection is completed. On, we don't look at these eggs until day four, and then we are very happy when we see three of these that have multiple little cells. One did not start cleaving, and so it's a dead oocyte. This is a mature ICSI embryo on day nine. They look much different than an embryo that we aspirate. They're brown. You can't see through them, but you can see a ring of cells around the edge of them. Top and bottom there were good ones.